My name's Harold. I uh, been really busy for the past week or so doing maintenance around the house and such, and uh, kind of tired. So I thought I'd take today and uh, goof off and uh, put together this video instead of doing anything really useful. And in the doing of this, I was thinking about the last one I come along and I asked people about, you know, uh, what would you do if your accelerator pedal got stuck to the floor of your car and, and it was running away down the street and everything. And right from the beginning, it said, always seemed to me the correct answer is to put it in neutral, coast over to the side of the road, and then turn off your racing engine. <laughs> well, I asked ladies here and there, and it seems like ladies you just almost universally never think about putting the car in neutral and I don't know why that is and so I'd like you folks out there to ask the ladies in your life what they would do if the uh, if the accelerator pedal gets stuck on your car and it was racing away down the road see if any of them ever think to put it in neutral mostly they'll say they'd cram on the brakes well if you're going really fast your brakes are going to fade out really quick and that's not going to stop you uh, you definitely don't want to turn off the ignition switch because that'll lock your steering column and you won't be able to turn and the road will, you know. Uh, that's the simplest thing and the safest and the easiest and the one thing that makes it not a problem at all when your accelerator sticks is just to put it in neutral. But anyway, you guys interview the ladies in your uh, realm and uh, let me know how many of them wanted to put it in neutral and how many had some other way or how many had never really thought about neutral. Anyway, anyway, we'll move on from that. Um, I'm going to show a little video today where a young fellow I know was putting a Cummings diesel, I think it is, into a 52 Chevy pickup <clears throat> and uh, he wants to move the exhaust manifold out away from the engine some and so and he also wants to drop the exhaust pipe connection down a little so I'm making some spacers to do that it seems like that'd be a simple easy job that wouldn't take too long but I made all this out of half inch hot rolled steel and the stuff's hard to machine and it took me over two days to get all that done uh, now you know I didn't necessarily get up early in the morning but uh, once I got started I, I stayed at it for a long time and uh, I've got uh, a project I've been dying to do for over a month, and I still hadn't got all the parts here. I got uh, an Arduino on order, and I, I think they must have took in the orders until they got so many of them and then decided to manufacture it, and then they're going to ship it. Although the, within three days of me ordering, they said it was in transit, and it's been long enough now they could have sent it from outer Mongolia, but. Uh, that's either here and there. I'll show you my junk over on the on the loading table, and and I hadn't got a story today. I can't even think of one. Uh, maybe next time, you know. But anyway, we'll take a look at the loading table, and then we'll get on with making these little uh, exhaust manifold standoffs. Well, I've got all these neat parts here, and a, a nice little stepper motor, and pretty much cluttered up my reloading table but I've had this stuff accumulating for a month and still no Arduino and in just a few days it'll be a whole month since I ordered the Arduino and I'm I'm wishing I'd ordered it someplace else but uh, anyway all that stuff sitting there ready to go if I ever get the Arduino and then I can start on that little project starting to get tired of waiting though I may just go down and buy one local then I'd have two Arduinos maybe if the other one ever comes from Amazon well Chris here is uh, going to put a Cummins diesel in a 52 Chevrolet pickup so what we're going to do is we're going to make it uh, possible to move the exhaust manifold a half inch back away from the block so we've got the parts laid out and uh, we're going to cut them. We'll chuck it up and lay it here in just a minute and just going to cut it. I start out by drilling out a lot of the middle so I don't have to cut it out later. 
I need electricity. thing up with this roughing end mill so I'm gonna square up all the all the pieces that I've got ready on one side and then I'll uh, start to cover them right to the shape but it's gonna take a while
I decided it was better to go ahead and cut the pockets here and not worry about making holes on the lathe. We were drilling holes in them on the uh, drill press. So go on and cut the pocket out. Okay, so there's the first standoff right there. And it's a little thicker on this side because the cast iron was the cast iron was a little thicker on this side, but the bolts and everything line up well and the hole matches. So three more of these and a piece for that end there for the exhaust connection. And that'll that'll have it pretty well squared away. <clears throat> Drilling a lot of holes in these so that uh, stop a little bit of the work with a milling machine. I've got this uh, <coughs> laid out here so that uh, the end is even with the end of the vise, and so I can just use the DRO, you know, the cordons to cut the hole and cuts way back on thinking, which I'm not all that good at anyway. So, uh, on with the cutting. Okay, so I got all the uh, pockets cut. The one for the last one there's already on the mill vise. Finally figured out that the best way to cut them was with a roughing end mill down to about 10 thousandths and then go back and finish it up with a regular four flute. Uh, over here, that's the the last one of them there and I'm gonna make sure that the sides are flat and parallel before I finish up here so I've got to run all four of them through that now it's time to make sure the sides are flat and parallel so I've done the, the one side of all of them now to turn them over and start on the other side I set the uh, end mill depth one time and now I've got every one of them on the finished cut without moving that end mill bit. So they should all come out exactly the same size. Well, those four pieces are done unless there's uh, a need to cut the corner off of them. I don't know about that part. Maybe there will be a need, maybe not, but I'm through for today. Uh, the next point part will be to uh, make a, a piece right there to sit on that and it's, uh, it's already got the holes drilled in it and such right down there so sorry about all the handheld camera stuff but you know this isn't uh, 20th Century Fox now that's it for today I'll be back tomorrow while I was finishing off the other four pieces of course Chris Grilled all this, got it ready. Now that all I need to do is to cut out for the for the holes, and this job will be finished. So I'll just mill out these little holes here, and we'll be done. All right, this is the last cut to make the both sides parallel and uh, flat and smooth and all that. And uh, that'll wrap up job is taking a little grinder and knocking the sharp edges off the inside hole.